Ready, roll. All right. Lesson 23, a wife for Isaac. Let's start at Genesis 24. Now, we had left off yesterday in the middle of 24 after Abraham had commanded. What was his servant's name? Remember? Logan? Left uh, Eliezer there with a command to go find a wife for my son. Needed to, she needed to be godly. She needed to be one who loved the Lord. She needed to be from the line of Seth. Okay. So those are some things that we see here. Go back to my homeland if I don't find a wife of these wicked Canaanites here. So, we pick up at verse 10. So let's see what Eliezer does. Chapter 24. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know thou hast showed kindness unto my master. We're going to stop right there a second. You were given a worksheet yesterday that showed a map, and it showed, uh, well, if you labeled them, it showed you the great distance that there is between the land of Canaan and the distance that Eliezer was going. This was no overnight trip. Okay. This wasn't even a two-day trip. This is a 750-mile trip. This is a long one. Now, in a day, we can do that in our vehicles nowadays. It might take all day. But it probably took Eliezer weeks to get there. Okay. Maybe 50 miles a day. I don't know. So a couple of weeks. Maybe longer. Depends on how the travel went. Okay. What animals are carrying the load? What type of animal does he take with here? Jennifer? Camels. Not a donkey that we've seen in other places, but camels because he knows he's going to be going through desolate, barren, desert, and wilderness. Camels are perfectly suited. They are created by God for that job. So he loads up these camels to carry foods and supplies as well as gifts because everything it says... All the goods of his master were in his hand. He, could, he didn't have to go ask Abraham, Abraham, can I take three bars of gold or two bars of gold? Everything that he needed, he knew what his master would want, and he could take those things. So he, he loaded those things up to take with him. Okay? And he would obviously need some camels to be able to take back the wife for Isaac, as well as maybe whatever goods she may require to come with her too. So we see him going out like that. And when they finally arrive in the city, the city of Nahor, so it's a place where Eliezer knows, okay, this is the location in which I need to find me a wife for Isaac, but rather than going into the heart of the city, here he stops at the well on the outskirts of the city, knowing full well that it's the daughters of these herdmen who typically bring the animals out to the well to get the water there. Okay, it's a task that they do, and he knows that. It probably is a very cultural, traditional way of doing things in all of the lands, not just here in uh, Nahor, but everywhere. Okay? And what did Eliezer do next so that he would know? How would he know? Okay, Maybe pretty soon a dozen girls are going to be coming out with, with their animals to get water. How is he going to know which one to choose? What does he do so that he can know? Colin? Yes, the one who speaks in a certain way. But how does he how does he determine that he's going to do that? What does he do? I mean he might he might have had that idea in his head, he obviously did, but he expresses it some way here. How does he express it? Amber? Okay. 
He prays to God. He expresses it here to God through prayer. He goes to God in prayer and says to the Lord, Here I am. I've arrived at the well. This, Lord, is what I have in mind for the way that I may know who the wife of Isaac should be. I will, and as Colin said, use that language there. Okay? He says, I will say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. So in other words, he's asking for water for himself. And the, there may be multiple girls who come out, dip down a pitcher, and give it to Eliezer to drink. But this is how I know that it will be the one whom thou hast chosen, Lord. Okay? Notice it's not Eliezer chosen, but Eliezer is telling to God, this is the sign I'm looking for so that I make sure I speak to the one you have chosen, Lord. So after, she, after I say that, give me a pitcher drink, she's going to show her selfishness, selflessness, and she's going to say, well, not only for you, my Lord, but how about I get you water for your camels too? So other girls may come through and say they'll give me water, but the one that says she'll give me and my camels water, that's the one, Lord, that I will know then that you have chosen for my master Isaac. Okay? So that's the setup. Okay? Because he knows God already has a specific girl in mind. God already knows if you are going to get married, and God already knows who your spouse is. You don't, I don't, and your parents don't. No one knows. But God does. God knows who the spouse of Isaac is going to be here. It's going to be Rebecca. And he knows that already. But Eliezer doesn't. But Eliezer is asking for God to give him a sign. Okay? And then, as soon as he's done praying, let's pick it up at verse 15. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. So this is a relative. Shows the rel- how they're related there. With her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. So she's beautiful, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. So she's unmarried. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. So there it is. Eliezer says, Let me have a drink of your pitcher. Verse 18, And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. So she scoops it up and gives it them drink. And then, verse 19, And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again to the well to draw water and drew it for his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Eliezer is done praying, and here comes Rebecca, just like that. And exactly as Eliezer had said, he says, Go ahead, can you please let down your pitcher and draw out water out of the well? And Eliezer drinks of it, and she immediately says, following that, Well, how about I get you water for your camels too? And she hastes back, she goes back to the well, she lets down the pitcher again, she draws it up, and there's obviously a wooden trough sitting nearby, or a concrete or brick, some type of trough there, and she pours the water into that trough. Okay? It's left there because obviously animals commonly need to drink water. So she can continue to pour water, and the camels gather around and lap up the water. They drink it. And that's what's going on here. Okay? And we see here, Eliezer held his peace in amazement here. God has already made my journey prosperous. Well, it seems so simple and yet so difficult, but God has made something so difficult simple. Okay, so let's see what happens after that then, because that becomes interesting too. Verse 22, And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels of weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, Moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them 
of her mother's house those things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. The man came into the house, so that's Eliezer, and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet, the man's feet that were with him, and there were set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. So then he tells the story of Abraham and of Sarah and of the blessings that God has made in the land of Canaan. And he also tells then of Abraham's command to him of how he needs to go and find a wife for Isaac. And then he says how he was praying to God about what the sign would be. And then he says he didn't even get done praying and here was already Rachel and she did exactly what he said. Okay. And then he says, verse 49, And now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go. Let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. The servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. And he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and they tarried all night, and they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. So we'll stop there before we get to the morning. So, after, now, Eliezer comes to back, we got to go back to the well. So there she's just poured the water into the trough. And Eliezer has come to the recognition that this is the woman that God has chosen for Isaac. Okay? And what does he do? He gives the girl some bracelets and an earring out of gold. When he asks her, well, who are you? She says, well, here's my relations. And when we can just stand there in amazement at Eliezer. Sometimes we have that maybe too. Maybe you've been on vacation in a place and you run into somebody randomly. It's very odd. It happens from time to time. Okay? Where you're hundreds of miles away from a place, from home. And you're on vacation, and you run into another family that you know from another church or something. Had it happened to me plenty of times. I remember being way up north by Taklamanen Falls in, in Upper Michigan, like Lake Superior. And there was another soccer coach that I knew, and there he was on the same day, same place. Or traveling through Colorado, down in southern Colorado by the Four Corners, and as you're going down the road, there passes the van going the other way of another family that we knew from Michigan. We'll just hit the brakes and back up. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, you can't be over here. Well, we are too. A little place. Why don't we stay together? Okay. Plenty of times in your lives. My, my mom and dad, they were out biking in Ohio. As they're biking down the trail, they met a couple from another church, from another state, from across the country. Well, what are you doing here? Well, same thing. What are you doing here? Well, we're here for the enjoyable bike drive. Those things we kind of stand up. What are the odds? Okay. That's kind of the same probably astonishment that Eliezer has here. That we see that here. Of his expression. And so, here Rebecca doesn't know the stranger, but he gives her these gold things, these valuable things. She says who she's related to. Okay. And when he asks for a place to stay, she's so excited, she runs home to tell the news. And what does she forget to do? Just like that damsel when Peter comes to the door after getting out of prison in the middle of the night. What did, what did Rebecca do, forget to do? What should she have done? Colin? Like Ellie Yeah, she should. Well, why don't you come with me? My, my, my uncle, uh, Laban, he's a hospitable man. Why don't you come with? And, uh, or my brother, Laban. Well, he's a hospitable man. Why don't you come with? And, and we can stay. We'll find a place. You've got plenty of room, plenty of stables for you to stay in, for your animals and everything. But she didn't. She took off and she ran back to her brother, okay? Laban, we know a little bit about him later on, so we might as well start learning about him here. He seems to be a man very concerned with his own wealth, kind of like Lot. He wants what's best for himself. And here he sees his, 
sister come running in and she's probably jabbering and jabbering, but he focuses on those bright, shiny gold bracelets. A half shackle of gold earring that she has. Maybe she's wearing it, maybe she's carrying it. And she's babbling forth about some stranger that she met that's come from a far land and says he knows her. And so Laban realizes my sister, my sister being probably temperamental and hurried along, she forgot. She forgot to invite the man in. So Laban instead, he goes out and goes and out to the well, and there sits Eliezer sitting on the side of the well. And Laban has a conversation with him, and Laban invites him in. Says, go ahead and come on in. Okay. Gives him an important place also. We'll take care of your camels. Probably send some of the servants out to take care of the feeding of the animals. Sits him down at the table and makes sure that there's a nice, maybe before he left, he said to make sure that some food was prepared. Get the best food out. Go slaughter a lamb. Let's bring a nice kid in here a nice, and roast it so that this man has some good food to eat. Okay. And so, now Eliezer is about to sit down, but he says, wait, before I eat, let me tell you my story. And Laban says, well, tell on, man. And Eliezer tells the whole story, like he said, the whole history of Abraham and Sarah. So he's telling these people about their relatives. You can imagine them being spellbound and sitting there in amazement. The stories that Eliezer can tell because they haven't heard anything. They probably don't know if Abraham and Sarah are even alive anymore. And here they have the news for the first time. Not only are they alive, but they're prosperous. God has blessed them. Okay? And then he ends by telling them, I am here for a wife. And here's what I asked God to give me a sign for. And that exact same thing happened. And so Rebecca needs to come with me. She must be the wife of my Lord Isaac that I need to go to. Okay? Now what's interesting here. Okay, is Laban is doing the talking. Okay? Instead of his father, and we see there's his father there, okay? in verse 47, Bethuel, okay? and we see them, but Laban and Bethuel answered. But it seems like Laban's doing all the talking. It's like he's a bit, uh, thinks he's more important. He knows better than his father, or maybe his father is already passed away. It could be an option too, and it's just speaking of it here. He's taking the place of his father. But, regardless of the fact, Laban here sees some value for his own family. He sees this rich man coming in. Okay? And so, again, once the agreement is made, the servant brings forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gives them to Rebekah and her fam and to her brother and her Mother, precious things. We don't read of the father. But here, much riches, much wealth are given to the family of Laban. He realizes, ooh, maybe there's a benefit for me in this family too. If my sister marries into this family, maybe we'll gain a huge, huge dowry. Because that was typical in the days, those days. You would pay a dowry. In fact, if we were, well, if, you, if we were to uh, go to Africa, okay, maybe even you married someone. Let's say you married someone from an African tribe. Still today, they would use dowry. When the daughter is married off to another family, that young man must pay a huge sum of money to that girl's family as a payment for her because for them, she's a valuable resource. She's able to help them in the farming and the care of the family. And now they're losing that resource, so this young man pays a huge dowry. So I'm sure Laban is thinking of that here too. Ooh, I can get rich off this. Okay? But let's see what happens here the next morning. Okay? And they did eat and drink, he and the man, men that were with them, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten. After that she should go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel, and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah. And said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate thee. And Rebekah arose, and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah, and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lehorai, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to med meditate in the field at the eventide. So he's having his evening devotions. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. 
And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So here we see Eliezer is a man of work. He's a man who wants to keep a schedule. He doesn't want to hang around and be lazy. So the next morning he awakes and he says, I would like to be going. I'd like to be going back to my master Abraham and his son Isaac, and I would like to take Rebekah with me today. Laban's family at first, whoa, 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 you know, let's give her some time here. Let's, uh, you know, we got to pack, we got to say goodbye, we got to have some celebrations. She's going to be marrying a stranger, might be the last time we see her. We'll give us some time. And they finally decide, well, why don't we ask Rebecca, see what she does. Rebecca, being God fearing, with faith in her heart, knows that this is the Lord's will for her. She doesn't have to worry about all these things. And she says, I will go with him. I can go. I can go right now. I trust. Here I am. I'm going to go into a strange country. I'm going to marry a man I've never met before, but I'll go. Okay? And so she does that. She decides to go. Okay? She doesn't question it. And then, again, probably a few weeks traveling. You can imagine Eliezer and her having different conversations, her getting to learn about her new family, Eliezer telling all about them and how Sarah had died and some of the other things about Ishmael. Anyways, now they're getting close. You can imagine him saying, well, it's yet. We'll be home yet tonight. Rebecca will be home yet tonight, Eliezer telling her. And as they get closer, Isaac is out in the field having his evening devotions and he can see the camels a far ways off and he stands up and he comes towards them. Again, has Abraham told him what's going on? More than likely by now, Abraham has told him where Eliezer was and what he was doing. So he knows that if Eliezer is returning with a girl, it's going to be his wife. And so he begins to go out, and Eliezer and Rebecca, they can see a long ways off someone coming, and she asks, well, who is this coming towards us? And Eliezer says, well, it's Isaac. So she puts on her veil. Okay, She puts on her veil before she goes and meets him. When they're close enough, she gets off, dismounts off the camel, and goes to meet Isaac, and he takes her into his mother Sarah's tent, we read there. Okay? And without even knowing each other, without having spent time getting to know each other, as we would say, dating in the state, they marry. Okay? They're married by faith. And they love one another because God has brought them together, because God has intended that they live together. And that is a main reason why they love each other. They married out of faith. And that love will only grow and grow and grow each day because they have a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not that they love each other for their beauty. They don't love each other for their money. They don't love each other for good looks or whatever it may be. They love each other because the Lord brought them together. They know it's God's will here. Because it's God's will that He's brought them together. They will show that love one to another. God brought them together. And that's the right way too for our, when you think of marriage, it's not that you're marrying the most beautiful person. Oh, you'll be attracted to them, no doubt about that. It's not that they're the richest It's not that they're the most popular. It's not that they're the smartest. But you're brought together in the Lord. And you love each other because God brought you together. Okay? So, this is God's way. We can know God's way too. Through what? I asked that question. How can we know God's way for you right now as a 6th, 7th, and 8th grader? How can you know God's way for you? Colin? Okay, we pray to God, we read His Word, and when you say think, I think a good word there is meditate. We meditate, we contemplate God's Word for us. What does this mean for me? How should I live? And already as 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, you can begin to do that. You can know God's way for you. And that, there we see, is a great blessing even for us.